pre prepping your car is to wash it. And we're using a wax and polish dissolving detergent. Now, you can get that at about any automotive uh, body supply house. Now, the reason you want to remove all this old wax and polish is because when you go to sand the paint down, you don't want to embed any of those little particles into the paint. If you do, then you're going to end up with some problems like we showed you. And these problems are called lifting. Now, here's a good example right here on the hood. This is all lifted. Now, sunlight did some of this, but most of this is bad preparation, had some kind of uh, contamination there, and the paint didn't stick. Let me show you up here on the roof. Now, this car is painted with a base coat and a clear coat, and I can just rub my hand over it and just pull the clear up. You can see the clear lifting right here, just like a sheet of plastic. It didn't stick. Again, that's bad preparation. Well, you know one thing about it, folks. There are no shortcuts in prepping a car, and somebody definitely tried to shortcut this prep job. That's right. Now, we're not going to do any shortcuts on this job. It takes a long time, so take your time, do a good job, and you end up with a good finish. All right, now, one of the next steps you want to take is to go ahead and inspect the car closely for any nicks or scratches or dents. Now, when you do that, let me have the towel here, Sam. There you go. Start out at one spot. Now, we're going to start right here on this corner. This way, you can start to check all the spots, and that way you won't miss anything. Now, it looks pretty good here. There's a little scratch here. Good shape here. Now, we already know right in here there's a spot. There's a nick right here. There's one right over here. So we know we have to repair those. That's right. And what we've got here is, of course, we've got a little dent and some split paint here. What that means is that this has been fixed before, and I can feel the plastic in it of the body filler. It's been fixed, and then it's been hit. Okay, and I can tell that there's body filler here. First, if I can knock on it and tell by the noise it makes, but there's a better way to do this. Now, if, you're gonna, if you, your folks are going to go buy a used car, here's a little tip for you. Here's a little magnet. Now, if you take a magnet and you set it right there where it's been repaired, you'll see it won't stick. It won't stick on the plastic. Go up here on the metal where you can see that it'll stick. So this is a good way to check to see if you've had any repair work done. Doesn't necessarily mean it's bad, but it does let you know what you've got. I think you can see where we're going with this today. We're going to go ahead and show you how to do door jams. We're going to jam it out. We're going to mask. We're going to sand. We're going to grind and fill. Do all the things to get this thing ready for paint. Now, remember, a lot of the cost and the time is in the prep, and that's where you can save a few dollars. Well, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll start with our prep, so stay with us. And we've got rust to deal with here, too. We're going to take a no. One million used cars are painted every year in the U.S. At Sitco, when you team up our super premium gasoline with our Super Guard motor oil, you'll get all the high performance and reliability you demand. So, prepare yourself to be totally blown away. Super premium performance. Sitco says go. Things can get pretty hot in the broadcast booth. Not as hot as your truck when it's been sitting in the sun. That's why there's Vent Visor. The Vent Visor installs easily on cars, trucks, or anything you drive, with no tools, no screws, and no holes. It lets you park with your windows cracked to ventilate the interior without worrying about rain. So the inside stays cooler and protected from damaging heat. It really is the easiest, most practical accessory to fix up your truck. Vent Visor makes your truck more of a super truck. Phew, that foot odor. I can't take it anymore. But can anything stop it? This will. Odor Eaters in Souls. Now, its powerful charcoal formula contains genuine Arm & Hammer baking soda. Look, foot odor is caused by sweaty acid. And now, Odor Eaters actually neutralizes odor-causing acid. These Dr. Scholl's can't. Finally, no more foot odor. And I thought it was hopeless. Only Odor Eaters in Souls stop foot odor with Arm & Hammer baking soda. Presenting Armor All Vinyl Siding Wash. Just spray it on, wait five minutes, then rinse it off with a hose. And look, why it's the greatest invention since vinyl siding. Armor All Vinyl Siding Wash. To win at this level, you need to have team players. You need to have team spirit. And you definitely gotta have team coverage. The NHRA on TNM Motorsports. It doesn't get any closer.
Well, welcome back to Shade Tree Mechanic. Well, we're removing the trim off of our car before we start to prep it. And it's always a good idea to do that because it makes it a lot easier to work on. Now, on a lot of your newer cars like this, you won't have nearly as much trim to remove as you do the older cars. But if you remove it, it makes it a lot easier. Now, we're also going to tape over our headlights because they're a plastic lens right here. So we don't want to scratch that accidentally while we're sanding. Let me give you another tip. I've got to work on this door here. It's got a pretty deep scratch on it. Now, before I go ahead and start sanding and filling and priming and so on, I want to mask the side molding. We wash the car with the uh, detergent. We use these Scotch-Brite pads, which really cuts through the wax. But we have a lot of buildup of wax over the years behind the moldings. Best thing you can use is a little brush. A toothbrush works well, and that's a lot of work. But you get in behind the molding, and you get all the wax out. That way, you don't have a problem with paint adhesion. Once that's done and it's good and dry, then I'm going to go ahead and take a small masking tape, mask the outside of the molding, and then I'll go ahead and take some wide masking tape and cut and fill it in. You know, Sam made a good point about that permanent trim. You don't want to accidentally remove it, because if you do, then you got to buy brand new, and that can be pretty expensive. But if it's damaged, of course, you'll have to replace it. Let me have that wide tape, will you, Dave? Here you go, Sam. Thanks. Okay, when you get tape now, we're using 3M tape. This is good quality tape. The edges are sharp. The adhesive's good. When you put it in place, it sticks. You buy cheap tape, it's going to tear funny on you. It won't stick. It won't seal good. Cheap tape will make your job a lot harder. This is the way to fly. All right, now we're going to go ahead and start sanding our deck, or our hood right here. Get your mask on right. And be sure you wear your safety glasses. Now, we're going to go ahead and sand this out. We're using a DA sander. You'll hear them called DA. It's a dual action sander. The reason we're using that is because it doesn't leave a lot of heavy swirl or grind marks in it. We're also using a 150 grit 3M sandpaper. Now, this is a sticky back sandpaper that mounts right here to the bottom of it. You know, 150 is pretty fine. Start with the finest sandpaper you can. Don't use the coarse right away because although it'll take it down fast, it'll make it a lot more finished work for you. And this is starting fine and working coarse will make it easier for you. You know, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we'll grind this back into here. That way we'll feather it back into the paint so we have a nice smooth surface. Okay, now we're going to take care of our scratch. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and use the sanding block. And this is a 3M block. It's got a great little handle on it. It's unique because it has roll paper. You stick a roll of paper in, you pull it along. It's self-adhesive. Makes it real easy. All I'm going to do here is sand this down. Now, I don't want to go all the way down to the metal. I want to just feather this back. The scratch is pretty deep. Then I'm going to have to go with a skim coat of finishing plastic. Okay, I've got this thing just about sanded out the way I want it. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a tack rag, any kind of a clean rag, get some of this dust off of here, and get this good and clean. We don't want to touch it with our hands because we want our finishing putty to stick to it. Now, I'll take some finishing putty, and I'll just go ahead and uh, mix this up. Real simple, just put a little bit right on here. Then a little bit of the hardener. Doesn't take too much because it's pretty warm. And then I'll go ahead and mix it up with a plastic uh, spreader here. And when we get the uh, hardener mixed in pretty good, then we're ready to apply our finishing putty. And what you want to do is not work it too much. Okay, once this sets up and gets hard, then I can sand it, feather the edges, and we're ready for primer. Well, you can see we're down to the body filler now, but we found that we have a little bit of a dent right here on this edge, and you can see the body filler here is cracked. We're going to have to take care of that, but before we do, the first thing we're going to have to do is straighten this edge, and we'll use a rubber hammer. Okay, 
Okay, well, the way Dave took that dent out in the front with the mallet's one way to do it. But the dent we've got in this deck lid is going to be a little bit different. I've selected a uh, flat dolly and a pick hammer with a flat face on one side and a pick on the other side. Two reasons. One, where the dent is is low, but around the outside of the dent, the metal's high. The first thing I want to do is flat the dent out. Now, when you work this, don't do it too much. Like I told you, you'll stretch the metal. All right, we've got that up a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do is take my hand flat right across here and feel for the high spots. And then I'll go ahead and I'll work the high spot down. Now, I'm not making any dents, I'm just driving this down. Now that feels pretty good. The next thing I need to do now is just grind this down, get it ready for some uh, filler right there. I think we got it. I you need, you need that? Go yeah, ahead. I sure do. You want these? Yep. I'll come around. These. All right. There you go. Thank you. All right. Now we got this ground down to where we can see what we're working with. Let me get this off first. All right. The best eyes that you have are right here in your fingers. And if you run your hand right along here, like I'm doing now, you can feel that there's a slight groove right in here. It's a little deep area. Now, it looks perfectly smooth, but there's a, there's a little gully, if you want to call it that, right here. We're going to go ahead and fill that with Bondo, and then we can level this out, and we'll be ready to go. OK, now that I've got this thing sanded down pretty well, next thing I want to do is take a tack rag and I'm using the tack rag to wipe all the dust off, and make sure there's nothing that they're going to prevent the filler from sticking. And what we're going to use here, basically the same thing I used on the door, and that's 3M. It's a lightweight putty, and it's different than the finished putties or finishing putties that you normally used to, because it's not lacquer based, and it won't shrink, and the polyurethane paints won't uh, lift it. Now, also, you mix a little hardener with this stuff. Now, all you have to do is mix the hardener in. When you got it all mixed up right, you just spread it on. Now, again, like I said earlier, when I said don't work it too much, what I meant was don't work it when you put it on the car because if you keep pulling at it, then you'll draw it and it'll, it'll lift. Just put a nice thin coat on, spread it good, and you let it harden, and you're all set. Well, now, what Sam was using is more of a spot filler, and I'm using more of a body filler here. But we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll show you how to tape your car. We'll finish sanding it, and we'll show you how to paint the door jam. So stay with us. Avoid using one manufacturer's filler and another's hardener, as chemical incompatibility can result. America's most sought-after video has finally come home. Cops, too hot for TV. What the censors would not let you see is now available at a video store near you. This explosive video contains the most shocking footage ever recorded for cops. From the wacky to the wild, it's uncut, uncensored, unbelievable. Capture it now and you'll see it all. It's the coolest tape I've ever seen. It's so much fun. I love cops. This is the greatest video I've seen this year. You gotta get it. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Get cops too hot for TV. Even cops can't believe it. Cops too hot for TV is now available at Best Buy and video stores everywhere. Or call 1-800-247-5151 and order direct. Can your radio do this? Only one radio can give you stereo sound this big, yet is small enough to fit almost anywhere. The extraordinary new wave radio from Bose. Press the remote control and hear sound from a radio like you've never heard before. Big, rich sound that fills the room. You hear music the way it was meant to be heard. Clear, full, incredibly lifelike. You've got to hear the wave radio to believe it. And now you can, in your own home. Satisfaction guaranteed. Call us toll free to learn how, and we'll deliver the wave radio to your door. Experience big stereo sound from a radio. Call today for more information. It will make a difference in the way you listen to music. A big difference. American Speed Association. It's
it's a different breed of racing. Total determination unleashed on cutting edge racing vehicles. It takes metal, nerve, with no room for let up. It's a convergence of contenders, all fine for just one thing, to win. The ASA AC Delco Challenge Series Lacrosse 300, live today at 2 p.m., 1 Central on TNN Motorsports. Well, welcome back to Shade Tree Mechanic. Well, what I'm doing is I'm cheese grating our filler here just to contour it into the hood. Let me see where we are. I got a little bit more to go. But what we'll do, we'll keep working on it. Once we got it the way we want it, then we'll sand it, and then it'll be just ready to paint. Okay, what I'm doing here on the side of the door, when we fill the scratch, is I'm block sanding it. I'm using this nice little block sander. And I'm, right now, I'm using 220 grit, and I started off with a 180 grit. What you want to do is go, you know, find the grits and get it real smooth. And of course, we're using all 3M products because they're the leader in the industry, in not only blocks, but all their sandpaper. Now that I've got it ready, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some compressed air and I'm going to blow this off. Make sure I get all the dust out of the way. And now I'm ready for the primer. Now, when you're using the primer, shake it up good. And of course, what you want to do is apply light coats back and forth and overlap them a little bit. And it's going to dry real quick, but that's okay. And again, you're better off with a lot of light coats because you're using it to fill the uh, sanding scratches. Another tip, when you get through with the can, turn it upside down and operate it like that a little bit. And for a couple seconds, it'll clear out the nozzle and keep you from getting uh, the nozzle clogged up. All right, now we're just about there. I've got it all smoothed down, and I don't feel any ridges or ripples or anything, so I think we're just about ready to primer it. Before we do it, though, we'll go ahead and we'll blow off what dust we have here. And then we'll take a tack cloth. And we'll make sure we get all the dust off of this. And you notice I've I've sanded out around this edge so we have a good area for the primer to grip. And now we'll go ahead and we'll primer it. Now use just fine, fine coat to start with. You don't want to have any runs. Okay, what I'm doing here is I'm doing the final sanding or the wet sanding and I'm using a wet and dry sandpaper, and I'm using a 600 grit, which is very fine. You can get away with 400, but I like 600 because it gives you a real nice surface. Now, as you get into sanding all this primer down, remember, you just want to smooth it. You're trying, not trying to remove much. Then you can take, and you can squeegee some of this down. And when you squeegee it down like that, what you're looking for is any scratches or any, you feel it with your hands to see if you have any high spots. And this will be just about ready for paint. I'm satisfied with this. When Dave's satisfied with the front, it's ready for paint. Next operation we've got to do is to go ahead and scuff the whole car down. All right, now what Sam is talking about is using these scuff pads, and this is what they look like right here. These, we'll take these and go over the entire car, and this will put a little bit of a surface on the paint so that the new paint will have something to grip to. All right, now that we got the body all scuffed, we've got a good surface for the paint to adhere to. Now, the next thing we're going to show you is how to paint the door jams. You know, jam work is real expensive because it's so labor intensive. That's what drives the cost of a paint job way up. And that's what we're trying to do, is show you how to save a few dollars on your paint job. Okay, now what I've done in here is I've removed the sill plate, the escutcheons here, and next I'm going to work on the weather stripping. Pull all this out, and your next step is to mask it off. How are we doing, all right? Yeah. All right, now we got our jams uh, mask off. We'll go ahead and scuff down our jams with prep saw, and then we'll tack it off. Now, the paint we're going to use to paint these jams is a, a two-part acrylic enamel. Now, this is your enamel, and this is the activator. 
Now, when you use these types of paints, you got to mix them together carefully. So read the instructions and follow them precisely. Also, we're going to be using a Wagner Fine Coat 2500 painter. Now, this is a low pressure, high volume type of painter. Now, this is fairly new on the market, isn't it, Sam? That's right. And it's required in California to have laws, and there's about 30 other states that have laws pending that says you have to have a good transfer efficiency. They're looking for a 65% minimum transfer efficiency. Just means that what comes out of the gun, 65% of it's got to get on the surface. This is 85% efficient. It's a nice unit. And that's pretty efficient. Now, one other point, too, when you're using these two-part paints, or any paint for that matter, make sure that you use a respirator like Sam is wearing right here, because these types of paints are highly toxic. You don't want to get this stuff in your lungs. Turn me on, Dave. Okay, ready? Okay, we're going to start right here. Sam. Okay. All right. All right, now we're going to go ahead and mask off the rest of the car. Got it? Yep. Go ahead. Okay, let me have this here, Sam. All right. Okay, it. go. I got it here, bud. All right. Well, it looks like we got it all masked. Looks like just about ready. We're going to go ahead and call our old buddy Joe Moon to have him bring his roll back over. We'll load it up on the truck and send it off to the paint shop. You know, we were painting today with a two-part enamel. If you use any two-part paints, they're urethane. You know, you need more than a respirator. You need to have a fresh air supply system or else you hurt your lungs. Yeah, and one other tip, too. You notice we were using these 3M scuff pads in order to, to buff the surface. Well, they're also very good for getting in between the cracks, unlike sandpaper. It'll get in between the cracks. It'll prep that surface. That way, the new paint won't peel back. Well, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll talk about new products. So stay with us. How are you doing around that other mirror, all right? I got to go ahead and tape that. Up. Steel wool, all chrome, using double-aught steel wool. This allows masking tape to adhere properly and also cleans the chrome. Hold it, Ari. You know you can't use Duraloop fuel treatment in your Indy car. It's an unfair advantage. I'm not allowed to use this product in my Indy car, but in my road car, I want the Duraloop advantage. Duraloop is scientifically formulated to clean, condition, and protect your fuel system for a smoother running engine with more power and less harmful emissions. Duraloop fuel treatment, tomorrow's technology today. It set the standard in do-it-yourself books, but now... We've made the best even better. Introducing the all-new Home Repair and Improvement Series from Time Life Books. With new color illustrations, step-by-step -step instructions, and a new spiral binding so books lay flat, it's never been easier to save money and create the home you've always wanted. You'll learn how to build a deck your family will enjoy for years, the tricks of the trade to install a new patio. Call now to examine decks, porches, and patios free for 15 days. Keep it for the special low TV price of just $1.99. Use your credit card and get this Stanley tape measure absolutely free. Other volumes will follow. Keep only those you want. The new home repair and improvement series from Time Life Books. We've made the best even better. Call 1-800-718-5959 now to get Dex porches and patios for just $1.99. That's 1-800-718-5959. The American Speed Association. It's a different breed of racing. Total determination unleashed on cutting-edge racing vehicles. It takes metal, nerve, with no room for let-up. It's a convergence of contenders, all vying for just one thing, to win. The ASA Pontiac Excitement 300, presented by Heater Meals, live next Sunday, 1 p.m., noon central on TNN Motorsports. I'm Tom Rivers. Join Bill Cody and his guests Chad Atkins, Ricky Lane Gregg, Tom T. Hall, James Gregory, Randy Travis, Kenny Chesney, the Cathedral, Red Siegel, and Porter Wagner. Don't miss it! Prime Time Country, weeknights on TNN, the Nashville Network. 
Well, welcome back to Shade Tree Mechanics. What do you got there, Dave? Well, Sam, I got a car cover that I found. It's brand. It's made of a brand new fabric called Evolution 4. Soft. Yeah, it's made by Kimberly Clark. See how soft that is. I mean, that's amazing. That won't scratch your car. For sure. And the other thing about it, it is water resistant, and it because it breathes so well, it doesn't promote condensation. I've been reading about that. That's a four layer stuff. It's resistant to tears and exactly. so on. Exactly. Exactly. Watch this. So you can even breathe through this. That's great. Now I got something else to show you. Nothing like a good car cover. You know, if you've got a good car with a nice paint job on it, maybe you live in a condominium, you don't have a garage, or you even leave your car at the airport. Wherever you park it outside, buy a cover and you can cover it up and protect your investment. Now, here's what I wanted to show you, Sam. Okay. Now, watch this. Look at that. Tell the water just rolls right off of it. Boy, it still breathes, huh? Yeah, that's what makes it so nice. Come on, let's help it. me put it on Karen's car here. All right, let's do it. This is really nice. And you know what makes this nice is you can get this in a universal size. It will fit a lot of different cars. Or you can get it customized. If you've got a unique car you want to fit. You can get them custom all, made, huh? Yeah. You, all you have to do is just see the uh, uh, your retailer, and he can get it fit up, uh, fitted what, for you. Which way are we going here? What this thing cost you, Dave? Here we go. I guess it's going this way, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. What does this thing cost you, buddy? Well, they cost anywhere from about $100 on up, depending on, you know, what you want to have done. All right. And they've got a four-year warranty. Look how that fits. Isn't that nice? Hey, yeah, it fits right over the mirrors, too. That That's neat. That is terrific. This does, it looks like it protect pretty well from uh, dings and stuff, hail and sticks. Hey, that looks great, doesn't it? Yeah, that looks great. That's pretty good. Well, folks, you know, we hope you've learned something about uh, getting your car prepped for paint. And when you do, and you have your car painted, wait about 30 days or 60 days before you put a car cover on, because you want to give that paint a chance to dry and cure. That's a good point. Had a lot of fun today. That was a lot of work, but it sure was a lot of fun. Yeah, but it was worth it, you know? It was. But once again, we've run out of time, but we'll see you again next time on Shade Tree Mechanics. So long. Take care. i got to finish. If you would like to order a videotape of today's episode, call 1-800-544-8485 or write to the address on your screen. Please refer to the offer number shown. Tapes are $15.95 plus $3.50 shipping and handling. Please allow three to four weeks for delivery. That's 1-800-544-8485.